Hey, Big Stevie from CarsSuck.com. If you've been following along, you know that I'm working on my 1980 Jeep CJ7, which has a 1982 uh, 4.2 liter inline six engine in it that came with a plastic valve cover, which I'm not thrilled about. Um, I tried putting a different gasket on it because it leaked really bad, but it still kind of leaks and I'm just not happy with it. And I think the design is just flawed for as old as it is. Um, on this side, the bolts don't go through the valve cover to hold it on. It's got these goofy uh, kind of umbrella washered nuts on it that go on to the head studs here. And uh, they don't go through the valve cover. So just the one side of the washer is clamping the edge of the valve cleaner or, or valve cover, excuse me. <laughs> so when you tighten it, it wants to push the valve cover in. Now there's some alignment dowels, there's two alignment dowels, but they're not enough. Maybe it worked when it was new and maybe it worked when you just glued the heck out of the gasket. But as you tighten that, it just keeps pushing that valve cover in so you never get a good seal. Plus, these are 3 8 studs coming up out of here and you're supposed to torque this to 28 foot-pounds. 28 inch pounds, excuse me. So there's no way it'll ever yield the threads on that nut for it to stay tight. So they loosen up unless you, I suppose you can lock tight them. So this is kind of my Christmas video. I'm wearing a shirt my sister got me for uh, Christmas. And mom gave me a $100 check. And with that, I bought this shiny aluminum valve cover which hopefully is going to solve all these problems. Because it's stronger, plus it's fastened down in a whole different way, and I'll, I'll get to that. Let's put it together. We'll start by buzzing off the old valve cover. Remove the five nuts down the driver's side, two nuts out of the center, go down to uh, some rocker arm bridges. And then there's three up the passenger side, one on each end, and it just pulls off. Then we have to replace the rocker arm bridge, or at least the two of them that have the studs sticking up for the old plastic valve cover. And they, they supply two new unstudded rocker arm bridges. So I'm putting the new one on. You have to make sure you get the push rods centered back in their little indent. And I'm just going to buzz it back down with an air ratchet and we'll come back and torque them. So there's two of those that we have to replace. Again, they come with the new aluminum valve cover. That uh, the valve cover, when I bought it, I bought the Omix or Omix, however you pronounce that. And the one that came, came with RT Off-Road instructions. So I guess they're just remarketing that one. But in those instructions, they talk about you might have to tap some holes. Well, the, the two holes that I want to use are these dowel pin holes. And these are the dowel pins that are on that plastic valve cover just kind of plastic indents that come down and go into two 732nds holes that are in the in the cylinder head and you have to use a bottoming tap. I first started trying to use just a regular taper tap like the one on the right but I had to get a bottoming tap like the one on the left because the holes aren't drilled all that deep and even with the bottoming tap I can only get about four, four and a half threads it can be a little tougher with a non tapered tap you got to be real careful, keep it straight, push real hard as you're doing it, back up a lot to clean the tap. The instructions don't mention that. They kind of talk about tapping holes and drilling holes, but and they warn, <clears throat> they warn about going too deep, but they don't say which holes and what, but uh, 
this is what you got to do. You got to tap those two holes where the alignment dials used to go. We got to clean that all up. We got to if you got any stuff from tapping in there, you got to get off there. You got to get it nice and dry to make sure the new gasket sticks. And it comes the valve cover comes with a perfectly good cork gasket that I am not going to use. Um, they say to add a little silicone to it, light layer silicone, but I went ahead and bought the Felpro. If you shop around, I mean, don't buy this at the Zone. They want 48 bucks for it, but I found it on a website that had all the parts my Jeep would ever need, and it was only 18. And these Felpros are nice. They come with the sealant already on them, so no silicone added to it. Really good gaskets. We'll put the new aluminum valve cover on, line it all up, start putting our bolts in without tightening them all. We'll get, just get them in first. I kind of had to push down here because that gasket's pretty thick and like, again, the bolts can't be that long because I've only got, you know, like three-eighths of an inch to work with there for it to stick through the gasket. Get them all on, then I'm going to come back and torque them. And the instructions came with suggested torque values for both quarter inch and three eighths because, or I'm sorry, five sixteenths, because you may end up with a mixture of those. Like the original hardware was quarter, and those new holes we tapped are five sixteenths. Working from the center outward, changing tools and changing torque values as needed, whatever size fasteners you end up using. So the kit comes with uh, new PCV grunts. Push those in. And a new fill plug. It's got the holes up here for like the air cleaner and the dipstick tube hold down and that kind of stuff. And what came were these tiny little I think uh, 1032s, and yet the holes are like number eight, so that's the wrong hardware. There's no big deal, I can buy a screw, but just saying, could have been better there. But uh, all in all, I'm happy with it if it seals, you know. So, uh, keep on.